the cat sat on the mat. We want to search for cat. So, in fact, let's put cat there as well. So, we want to search for cat. There are two instances of the word cat inside this string here. So, what we need to do is we need to start at an offset of zero. Let's pull all this down so it doesn't distract us. We're starting at offset of zero. So it's going to start from before the T. This is position zero. This is one. We remember we start at zero. So we're going to go zero, one, two, three. Four is where it is where the uh, C starts. So one, two, three, four. That's where it starts. Now our position is our offset is now equal to four. Or no, sorry, this substring equals four and our offset equals zero still. This is probably a better way to represent it. So we've set zero, one, two, three, four, and we've got to this C here. Now our offset, the next while around the loop, wants to be here. So we need to add three characters to it. However, how do we know how many characters to add to it? Well, we need to obtain the length of the search term in order to add to the offset. So what we need to do is, um, we need to first of all set the offset to the um, the value, um, let me think, hold on, so substring four, right, substring is equal to four. We need to set the offset equal to substring add the amount of characters in here. So the substring will now become four add three, which is seven. So now the offset's seven, the next while around the loop, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've missed out this because we've already found this. We don't need to process this. Now it's gonna search from here and it's gonna find another instance of it here. And then it will do exactly the same thing as I've just explained. So if you don't understand this, rewind the video and listen to, to what I've said again and try and understand how these variables are being set each time. Remember, we can use the string len function with this cat to obtain the length of the string, so that's not a problem. So, let's put this into action, put my words into action. And let's pull that up. And so, we're in the loop. Let's say this returns as uh, four, like we did before. So remember, it was four characters. Now, we don't need to think about this yet. We just need to do the code and then we can test to see if it works. So, the offset is now going to be equal to strpos add, and we need to add the string length of the search text. So, let's come down here and say search length equals strlen. This is going to return the length of the string in an integer. So, search. Now what we do is just add that on. Okay. So now what will happen is the next the next uh, while around this loop, the offset will dynamically change because we've used a variable here and we've changed the variable here. When we started at zero, each time around the loop, this is going to be dynamic and change. So let's echo this out each time. Put a line break on the end so we can test what we're doing. So the cat sat on the mat or the cat sat on the cat we're going to search for cat we're replacing with at the moment this doesn't matter because we haven't taken this into account in our program so we click find and replace and we'll return with 7 and 22 now this has disappeared but let's just retype it now let's to double check that everything's right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 remember we're starting now from there We've already we, we we've already got the substring. In fact, let's echo the substring as well, or the string pause rather. Sorry, so echo str uh, pause. This is this which is changing. Room, remember, and we'll put a break on the end of that. So we're going to be uh, output the string position, then the offset, then the string position again, then the offset because we've got two instances of cat. So search for cat, replace with monkey find and replace so let's type this again the cat so at position four one two three four we find the word cat 
we skip this because we know the positions so that's fine we can do we can replace that later with the uh, substring replace function one two three on is at position seven so four five six seven now we begin searching from here so one uh, seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen at 19 here we find the instance of the word cat and three later we end up with 22 now at this point we're at the end of the string so in our program uh, this is going to evaluate to false so we're going to break the loop it's as simple as that thinking about it however when you are writing it you might find it a bit hard to get around the logic so if I was to say cat 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 after this and I'm searching for cat again monkey doesn't matter right now and I can replace we get a whole bunch of variables uh, numbers here sorry telling us the position and where we're starting from after the same if I was to just type monkey search for monkey and replace with cat for example find and replace oh monkey monkey cat oh okay okay We'll address this issue later um, when we test it. So, okay, we've echoed the string position. We don't need to do that anymore, but we still need to keep this offset here in order for us to, uh, our program to work correctly. But we don't need the line break on the end. So, now what we need to do in here is we need to use the substring replace function to replace um, from a certain uh, part of this. So, we need to create a new variable, or we don't actually, we need to update the text variable using the dollar, not the pound sign. Substring replace, remember we're searching for the string, and this is equal to text. We're searching in the text. Substring replace inside the text. What we're looking for is replace. We're looking for the word replace. Uh, what well, we're not looking for the word replace, but we're looking for what the user specified to replace now we need the start and the length so where are we starting at obviously we're starting at the offset uh, no sorry we're starting at the string position and the length um, is the length of the search character so we're starting at the string position that's been be that we've been found and we're ending three characters later for example if it was cat so now let's check this works. So we'll come down here after this while loop and we'll echo out text. So let's give this a try. The cat sat on the mat. We want to search for cat and we want to replace it with monkey. So I'm going to click find and replace. The monkey sat on the mat. So it works. Now we're going to type the cat sat on the cat search for cat and replace with monkey find and replace you can see it's updated both hello this is alex from php academy and this is a video tutorial created for the new boston now in this tutorial i'm going to be talking about timestamps in php now timestamps are a widely used um, standard that has been utilized by PHP in order to keep track of uh, the current time, uh, the current date, and in, in fact we have functions that can retrieve say a date in a week or so or a week ago, th just things like that. Now a timestamp um, is a numerical value of the amount of seconds, so it's an integer value, of the amount of seconds from the 1st of January 1970. So, for an example, uh, let's just echo out time. We're going to echo out time, and this is a function that returns the current Unix timestamp. So, let's come into our page here and refresh, and we can see that we're giving, given a large integer value. Now, this value here that you see is, in fact, the amount of seconds from the 1st of January 1970. Now, if you watch carefully, at the end here we've got 75. Let's refresh the page and see what changes. And you can see it's changed to 90. Now, if we do that again, we're going to 94. And if I gradually refresh it, say every one second, you can see that this value keeps incrementing. So it's really useful to keep track of the amount of um, seconds, or, sorry, of the current time um, depending on 
you know, the amount, depending on how you process this value. Um, at the moment, if I was to say um, I uploaded a file or I processed a comment or I um, just did anything on a web page that would require me um, or the, the functionality would be there to tell me when I did it. For example, let's say I did uh, post a comment, I might want to um, create my website to show when the comment was posted. Now if you were showing your users this value, they wouldn't really make much sense of it. I could say, for example, we echo the current time is um, and then I append the time onto the end of that if I refresh um, this is really un it's not user friendly at all because what we're doing is we're showing we are showing the time in terms of from a certain date in, within seconds but we're not actually displaying in a human readable form so how can we uh, how can we change this well let's just get rid of that for now and let's go up here and create a variable called time and give it the current timestamp now down here what we can actually do is we can create a new variable called actual time and we can process process this using the date function now the date function works with times as well and it takes two arguments the first argument is how you want it to be displayed that will go in here and we have keys of different things to use this um, and then the second argument is the uh, is a timestamp so I'm going to type in time which is obviously our current timestamp here so I'm using this date function to process our timestamp and show it correctly so obviously after this we're at, we're going to show the actual date so we can append that on there now at the moment nothing is going to happen if we refresh you can see that um, it's blank because we've taken the timestamp but we haven't actually processed it in a way now the most common way would be to do H a small i and a capital S. This is just the way I always do it, I prefer. Now this is the hours, this is the minute, and this is the seconds. So we can uh, put a colon in between each one. Let's refresh, and you can see that what's happened, oh no, what's happened? Um, okay, yeah, that's because I've put actual date instead of actual time there, that's my uh, variable naming wrong there. So let's refresh and we'll see what's happened. Um, oh, we've got ST there. Oh, that's a sorry, that's a small S. Refresh. So, okay, now we're showing the current time is 2014 uh, 34. And if I look at my clock uh, on my computer right now that you can't see, I know that that's correct. So if I refresh, you can see that this time uh, will increase. Um, and as we come into the 50s, we see this time start to increase uh, and go up. And then instead of just showing uh, the normal boring seconds that we were showing before in the timestamp, you can see this changes according to um, according to uh, um, the, the timestamp that's dynamically updating because the seconds are increasing. So we can format this in any way you like. If you go over to the PHP manual, and search for the function date you'll, you'll be shown lots of examples of how to format this now what we can also do in here is we can include the date itself so you can do something like a capital uh, D so we could say D um, M Y so this is going to show you the date the month and the year because obviously using a timestamp we can work out what the day is the month and the year as well so if i refresh that you can see it's coming up with friday april 2011 so i can change this again i could put say a small d and a small m and what this is going to do is this this is just going to process it slightly differently and show it in numerical format so there's a lot you, there's lots you can do i'm not going to cover everything that you can type in here uh, in every way but what we could also do is we could say D M Y um, and we'll just change this to make sure it makes sense time or the date time and then I could say uh, at uh, H I sorry H I S the the, co uh, the colons in here are just uh, for display purposes so uh, this now reads the current date time is Friday April 2011 at 20 or, or 8, 16 and 31 seconds. So by doing this I have um, taken a timestamp which originally we, um, let's just kill the page there, originally we found hard to understand because it's just an amount of seconds. However PHP has some really useful functionality in order for us to turn this 
into um, a readable date. So that's basically what a timestamp is, that's how you use it in PHP. Um, and like I said, if you go over to the uh, PHP manual and search for the date function, you'll have a lot more um, that have a lot more options there that you can uh, f format the date and time in. Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org, and this is a second video for the new Boston on timestamps. Now, when we want to display a date, we can display the current date. We've already established how to do that. Now, what if I wanted to display a date that was, say, a couple of days ago or a week ahead, or in fact, I wanted to read in a particular date um, and store it as a timestamp? Now, when you're storing data for example dates in databases it's always recommended you store as a timestamp therefore um, making it um, available to process uh, that date um, in, in many different ways possible so at the moment you can see we've got um, the time we've grabbed from a timestamp we've got the actual time which has been formatted however what if I want to just up here uh, let's just remove this as well otherwise it won't make sense what happens if just up here I want to change the date I want to change the date to say um, a week ago okay so today's date is April the 1st um, 2011 so what I want to do is I want to change the time um, and I want to say the time is equal to um, in fact what we'll do is we won't do that here. We'll establish the timestamp here. And then here, what we'll do is we'll um, say we can either say plus or minus a certain a certain uh, amount of seconds. So what we can do is we can say um, minus uh, 20. So time minus 20, that's 20 seconds before uh, what we're looking at. So let's refresh this. Now, um, at the moment, this shows um, Ah, well, that's probably a bad idea. We'll say uh, minus 60 for a minute. So let's refresh. So this says um, it reads 8.24 and uh, 50 seconds. Now, looking at my clock on my computer, it's actually 8.25. So now it's 8.26 on my computer, so we've gone back an hour. So now that what we could probably do is um, say time now equals we'll copy and paste that over to here get rid of that um, append a break onto that in fact no we won't we'll um, time modified so I'm just setting up my variables so they look a bit nicer so now what we can do is echo a sentence here so the time now is time now a break onto there and say the time modified is and space and time modified so let's refresh this page and see what we get so the time now is Friday April 2011 and you can see this 2655 however this one's 2555 because remember we minus 60 seconds however there's a really useful uh, function in PHP and that is called um, str to time and what this allows you to do is take a string uh, data for time so we could say plus uh, one week and that would return a timestamp with a week's worth of seconds added onto it so we can test this in here we could say plus and then we could say um, str to time remember this is string data we're converting a string to a timestamp we can create say plus one week now if we refresh this the time now will um, the time now will show uh, or we're looking at the date in this case Friday um, April we've added uh, a week on so we are looking at th oh no Thursday 1916 hmm. Put on plus um, Oh, hold on, no, one week, there we go. So, refresh. Um, right, so this might just be my, okay, there, plus one week. Uh, and what that should do is, um, no. In actual fact, looking at this logically, um, okay, right, 
right okay so what I've done is um, I'm returning the timestamp and adding on um, something we don't need to so if I was to say str to time this is already including the timestamp and then we're adding a week on so let's just try this again um, and refresh okay so now you can see that um, it's gone from Friday to Friday however um, if we were to say uh, minus one week this is probably a better example because now we're going to go back into March um, we've changed this now to March so uh, let's just put this as a D and refresh so 1st of April and let's put this as a D small small D lowercase D and let's refresh okay perfect so now we've got a textual represent a, a numerical re representation of the day so 1st of April 2011 we've gone back a week which is the 25th of March so now what what happens if we say uh, plus one year we're obviously going to take ourselves into 2012 so um, we've got 1st of April 2011 plus uh, and then the modified is 1st of April 2012 um, but what we can also do is we can do things like um, combinations so what we can do is we can say plus one week um, two hours uh, 30 seconds okay so what we're now doing is we're adding a week two hours and 30 seconds so let's just refresh we'll check the first it's first of April and it's 2031 so we now ended up with the 8th of April which is a week later with 22 and you can see that we've done two hours and the 30 seconds is been added on so we've got 35 here and we've got five here so we're going into the next minute so this is a really great way to modify your times depending on your needs um, Obviously, these functions can be used alone. You can use them uh, to feed in a timestamp. Um, so we could say um, time minus, and we could say 30 seconds. So let's uh, refresh. Um, oh, we've gone back to this again. So uh, I think it appears that we're not, yeah, we're not going to use this because. Um, because of the nature of how the function works however um, we can obviously use this alone we can use the str time and then say a week however if we wanted to go back let's say um, let's say for example 30 seconds uh, 30 minutes um, let's just say um, well we'll enclose this in brackets first and then we can say two hours or uh, and we'll just say like seven days for example so seven days two hours 30 uh, seconds and 30 minutes so what we're doing is we're multiplying everything together to create the seconds now let's refresh the page and we can see that what we're doing is uh, we're taking this back seven days so we've got um, first of April hmm let's just try changing this to 24 hours see what result we come up with let's refresh okay so um, it's taken us back um, uh, 24 hours um, 24 hours let's just double check that 24 hours then another two hours um, that's back to the 31st of March so yeah 24 hours we've been taken back um, not sure why this seven days isn't working but anyway it's just something to research and have a look at it's very hard to explain every single point of uh, timestamps because there's so many functions within PHP that deal with the time um, so be sure to have a little research around have a look around um, the php.net manual is uh, full of information about this and you can view live examples um, but this is generally how we would use uh, timestamps and how useful they can actually be Hello, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is another video for the new Boston. Now at some point when you program in PHP, you are going to need to generate random numbers. Now the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to generate a random number, how we can specify a lower and an upper limit, and then I'm going to talk a bit about why you might need to uh, specify, oh, generate a random number. So when we use the rand function, which looks like this, we can either supply no arguments at all, or we can supply two arguments. 
Now, we're first of all going to look at supplying no arguments. So if I was to just echo round, or in fact, create a variable called round that we can use later on in our program then. Um, now, random number in PHP is automatically seeded, so there's no need to do anything. All you have to actually do is call round. Now, at the moment, because we haven't supplied arguments, this is going to uh, generate a random number between a minimum and a maximum amount. And the minimum amount is, I think, 0 or 1, and the maximum is a pre-specified amount. So let's just take a look at the preview of this in our browser. You can see that we've now generated 30,150, now 10,631, 180, so we're going lower towards the lower limit, back up to the higher limits, and we can keep refreshing and we'll have a random number. Now this isn't unique, so every time you refresh, it will automatically reseed, and we will be um, we will be uh, generating perhaps the same number twice. Now, uh, if I was to uh, look at this, I can see that there's obviously an upper limit because we're not going into say the millions, but there is a way we can find out this upper value. Uh, so if I say max equals, and it's a get rand max function. Now what this will do is this will um, specify the maximum amount of uh, uh, the maximum integer that this random value can be when we've specified just rand on its own. So let's uh, put a forward slash in there and then max. So essentially what we're seeing is the random number out of the maximum. So let's have a look at what that's produced. You can see now we've got 9552 out of 32,767. 32,767 in this case is the maximum number that can be generated. And the number that has been generated is 9552. So you'll see that as we uh, refresh, this value will stay the same. However, the random number that's being generated will, uh, will uh, sort of increase, decrease, and change. So what happens if we don't want to use all this and we just want to echo out a random number between a specific amount? Let's say you were creating a dice game where you, the user had to roll a dice randomly. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a form. And the action is going to be uh, this current page, uh, which is index.php, and the method is going to be post. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to create one button, and that's uh, a submit button with the name roll and the value roll a dice. Or is it die? Uh, oh, I'm not too sure. We'll say roll dice. It's uh, irrelevant here. Okay, so inside PHP, let's just get rid of all this for now. We want to first of all check if this button has been pressed. This is something by now you probably should know what, how to do. So we're saying if is set dollar underscore post. Remember we're using a post variable here. Um, roll and uh, oh that's it actually that's all we need to do because we're clicking a button. So if uh, the button has been clicked, we can say clicked just to uh, test this for now. Click. Okay, so let's uh, refresh our page. We can click on this and it will come up with clicked. So you sort of get the idea of where this is going. What we're going to do is we're going to generate a random number between 1 and 6 when we press this because a dice has 6 sides. So let's um, create a new variable called rand and we'll call that equal that to rand. Now we're going to echo out you rolled a and then we're going to append on this random number. Now, as it stands at the moment, we have um, clicking the button. It's giving us a massive number, which is irrelevant to a dice. So the program is pointless. However, if I was to specify just two arguments in here, we can specify a minimum and a maximum or a lower and an upper limit. Low, limit. So we can say between one and six. Now, so I've said 1 for the first argument, 6 for the second. Now, this is an inclusive value. So we could we could be echoing a 1, we could be echoing a 6, but we're not going to be echoing anything less than a 1 or anything more than a 6, and obviously the numbers in between. So let's have a look here. Let's refresh. 
At the moment it says you rolled a four, we can click it again, you rolled a two, you rolled a six, you rolled a four, you rolled a three, a one. So we've pretty much had every value and we can keep clicking that and it will never go over six and it will never be under one. So that is one um, fun use, if you like, for the random function. Now, what are the other reasons we might use it? Now, when we're uploading files, we might want to specify a random, um, a random uh, array, or if you like, of um, numbers and characters and letters and things like that. Anything really. Now, the random function is really useful because it's going to produce a more or less random value every time which you can combine with other random values and letters of your choice and even MD5 hashes which you can look at on one of my other videos so the random function is great for doing what it says and if you do need to use a random function all you need to do is call round you can specify a lower and an upper limit a minimum and a maximum limit if you'd like to call it that or you can just leave it blank and you uh, will be generating a number with a predefined upper limit. So that's the random function in PHP. Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston. Now in this video tutorial and the uh, video tutorials that are going to come after this in, in this short server series are talking about a predefined um, variable in PHP called dollar underscore server. Now you may have seen this before if you've dealt with um, PHP before. Um, server is a predefined set of uh, environmental information and it allows you to um, let's just go back to our it allows you to um, access certain information about the page the user uh, requests that have been sent for example so in this video we're going to be looking at the file name and how it can be useful to us now how do we go about doing this? So I've already shown you um, the uh, the variable name, which is dollar underscore server. So it's much like uh, things like dollar underscore post and dollar underscore session. So if you're learning PHP for the first time, you're probably starting to see some kind of resemblance to um, with all these. So what do we do if we want to echo out or display to the user the f current file name of the PHP script that we're on. Now you wouldn't necessarily in everyday applications want to do this because you know the user can already see um, the file name and um, we're working with index.php at the moment um, we've got this error because we haven't specified anything but yeah we, we can already see the script name so why would we want to do this? Well it's useful for us when we're doing things like submitting forms for example you um, specify your um, the uh, the key inside of here so I'm gonna say uh, script underscore uh, name now what this is gonna do is it's gonna take uh, the script name and it's gonna apply it into a variable so I'm gonna say script name you can just echo it out straight away like this but I'm gonna put it into a variable so it's just a bit easier to uh, see what we're doing so we've got the script name here and we're using the predefined server variable um, and this is the environmental information that we're, we're putting through so we've got script underscore name in capital letters now we're echoing this script name so let's test this and see what we get okay so we've got forward slash series forward slash server forward slash index now you can see this corresponds somewhat to my URL in the sense that we're not including the uh, domain name at the moment I'm working locally on my computer but we we don't include the we're not including the domain name so why is this useful now let's say we wanted to submit a form but we didn't know the file the name that the the, um, the name of the file that the user was actually currently on for example let's create another file and we'll put a form in and we'll have the action of this um, well we'll leave the action out that's the point so method equals uh, post and in here we'll just create a submit button uh, equals submit uh, name equals submit and value equals submit now I've given this a name so we can keep track of when this button has actually been pressed so let's save this as header .inc.php. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to include it in the top of my script. So you should have already had a look at the include uh, function already. So 
header.inc.php. Now what this is going to do is, is it's going to include this inside of our script. So let's just check that out and see what happens. Okay, so now we've included this button here. Now, what happens if we want to, um, I mean, at the moment I've left action blank. What happens if we had a, another page? So I'm going to create another PHP page here. Um, another page.php. What happens if we had another page and we were including this file as well? So header.inc.php. Now, what I want to do is I want to have, let's just get rid of this for now. I want to submit this um, this form, but I want the action to be updated depending on what page I'm on. Because if I was to say have this button here, but I I had um, let's say if is set um, dollar underscore post submit echo. Um, we could say anything really. Um, uh, process one. This process might be, say, registering the user, if that makes sense. Um, let's just copy and paste this over to the other page. But we can now call this process two. So on index.php, we're dealing with process one, and on here, we're dealing with process two. However, we've got the same form. So what happens if we want to say submit it to and this information the button come back to index.php or on this one the button to come back to index uh, another page.php so in here I could type index.php so we've solved half of our problem so let's refresh the page and I click submit and it comes up with process one but now if we access the other page You can see that when I click submit, we go back to index.php. However, what I want to do is stay on another page.php, but process this here. So how are we going to go about this? Well, the answer is simple. We've already looked at uh, this. Um, we've already looked at this uh, uh, script file name or script name. So what what we can do is we can specify a full uh, file name. So we could say um, script name equals and uh, and um, this could be relative obviously to server and in here we could type let's say um, script uh, name now what's happened here is we have um, we've created um, um, something that's going to be dynamically updated depending on what page they're on. So this header include is included on index and another page, but when we're on index, this will be different, and when we're on another page, this will be different again. So let's change this action here and update it dynamically. So we can set PHP tags to um, to put this in here, and we can just echo out script name. So now what's going to happen is, whatever page we're on, Let's just view the source. You can see that form action equals another page.php there with the uh, the long um, the file names that we're well, the directories that we're currently in. However, when we're on index.php, you can see that it's automatically changed again. So obviously this isn't going to work at the moment. Well, it will because um, just because of the way everything's set up. So um, let's just go over to another page. And we click submit and we've done that so we've used the same form to process but on two different pages now how would this be useful in a real-life application now let's say this submit button had a form field which was username and password um, and you wanted to um, log your users in but keep them on the same page as they are you could use a form to log your user in everything could work absolutely fine and then what you could do is using this variable that we've uh, we've set here you could redirect them back to the page that they submitted the user login from so most websites you have the username and password at the top of the page and you are returned to the page that you are currently re viewing before you logged on so that's a really useful way of using uh, that server predefined environmental variable Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and welcome to another video tutorial created for the new Boston. Now in this video we're going to be continuing with this server environmental information but we're now going to be producing the uh, host. Now this is um, the host of the website is we're going to return is going to be the http colon forward slash forward slash um, 
and it's going to be the dom domain name after that. So let's get straight ahead and echo out this dollar underscore server. And the information we need to supply in here is HTTP underscore host. Now what this is going to do um, for me is going to I, it's going to output local host because I'm just running on a local server. So let's refresh this, and you can see that we've got local host here. Now in this video, I'm not going to program as much as I'm going to talk about this. Um, we're just going to talk about why this might be useful. Now let's just say we have a template system. Um, I might have a variable up here which is called host. Okay, we've got a variable up here called host and this might be um, contained within say a configuration file. So let's get rid of this and we'll create a new file called um, we'll call this conf.inc.php. So what we can do is from our index.php file we can include or rather require, that would probably be better, conf.inc.php. Now Presuming these are our settings, what we've automatically now done is created this variable that's going to automatically update the host that we're running this from. So let's say at the moment I've got it on localhost and I'm developing it. All my pictures, for example, for a template system, are going to come from localhost forward slash something. So it could be local at the moment the URL I'm running under is localhost forward slash series forward slash server. So what I could do is I could say um, host equals this however um, template or, or images equals dollar underscore ser no it would be host because we've already defined that host and then we can append forward slash images for example so we could say that this is our images folder and what we've automatically now done is as long as the directory structure is kept the same within our site which it should be if we're developing it the way we want it we're automatically updating the host so what I could then do is inside my file I could say um, echo and I could create an image here source equals that and I could say right what wh what's the location of this so we can append on images so we've created um, this images uh, uh, variable if you like um, so we can append on images and then we can put the uh, file name afterwards so I could uh, say put another trailing uh, slash on there and we could say images and then um, header dot uh, GIF for example so what this is automatically done is now if we transfer this from localhost which I'm running at the moment on a local server to let's say phpacademy.org our configuration file is automatically going to update the images folder to phpacademy.org forward slash images so now our page is going to automatically update each directory so we don't have to go through and change them so this is how um, this uh, this server environmental information with the HTTP host in here helps us um, with sort of day to day easy running of a website and when you're thinking about creating a website with lots of images and you've got lots of different pages you should always think about creating a config file with this kind of information in there there are many other ways to do this um, and many different sort of techniques and methods however as long as you're using something that ensures that each um, of your folders or wherever you're referencing to often is consistent, you're going to end up with a website or a project that's easily transferable. Especially if you were creating something that then had to be, say, released to the public, you'd want something that people can just copy straight over to their server and start using more or less straight away. Hello, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video tutorial we are going to be looking at the headers function or the header function in PHP so to modify the headers that are sent to our browser. Now why would we need to modify headers that are sent to our browser? Now there are lots of different reasons for this. You may want to say enable or disable caching of pages. Uh, you also might want to change the document type so you might want to change it to say uh, a JPEG image or um, a PNG image or something like that in order to process an image on a page if you were using say the PHP GD library uh, which is something you can look at later however in this tutorial because we're just um, talking about functionality of this we're going to be using the, this header function to redirect our users to another page 
Now before we start, it's really important to let you know that the header function, which looks like this, cannot be used um, after output has been sent to a page. So for example, if we have a header called, or a, some header tags, this is a HTML output. Therefore, we're using PHP afterwards to using the header function. However, this won't work because we've already sent data to the page. So if you are to use the header function, you either have to use it after our content or we need to um, talk about output buffering and starting output buffering on a page, uh, which is another tutorial. So uh, you can have a look at that in regards to headers. So let's just say we have um, a PHP, um, a blank PHP page. I'm going to create a variable called true. In fact, I'm going to create a variable called redirect, which is equal to true. Now I'm going to create a simple if statement to redirect us to a specific page um, if this uh, variable is true. So obviously this is an example, but later on if you have, let's say, um, want to log a user in or log a user out, you might want to redirect them back to a specific page. So we start the header function like this and inside we specify the location and to do this we always use the predefined text location and then a colon and after this we specify the page we want to redirect the user to so I'm gonna say redirect page equals um, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash google.co.uk so now what I can do after this is I can append redirect page so this is essentially the same as typing header and then the location inside and then writing writing it like that however I'm using variables just um, so we can get used to the idea that this uh, page may change so at the moment this um, this should redirect us to Google as we enter the page so let's refresh and you can see what that's done is it's redirected me straight over to google.co.uk so let's slightly modify the uh, script I want to say if redirect equals true redirect the user otherwise don't so at the moment redirect is equal to true but I can change this to redirect equals false and we can go back uh, type headers and uh, we haven't been redirected however if uh, we were to change this here to true and we were to redirect to a specific page then we refresh and we are redirected so just by demonstrating the use of the function uh, with regards to redirecting a user you can see that how useful it is in changing page information like I said now this is the uh, this is an example to redirect a user however if you research this function um, enough and watch some of my other tutorials as well because we will be using this uh, function later on uh, you'll understand that it's not just for uh, for redirecting a user it's actually just to modify the header information um, with your your client your uh, browser so bear this function in mind the location feature of it is very important and uh, it's uh, a great way to sort of quickly redirect your user without using um, any meta tags um, so HTML meta tags um, and just remember that we can't um, have any output any HTML output before this so I've created header tags my page with the uh, h1 tags now let's uh, go back and go to headers now we've got the my page displayed that's absolutely fine but now we have a warning it says cannot modify header information headers already sent on line 8 so this is the uh, where we're getting the error you can see this is line 8 but headers already sent however if we were to have this below here we're already modifying the pages headers so 
we are resending header information but we're never going to get to see this so what happens if you want to have a page that already maybe has some output but you need to um, redirect the user at some point well, there's a simple option um, and that's OB which stands for output buffering and we'll discuss that in another tutorial which will be the next in after this hello this is Alex from phpacademy.org with another video for the new Boston in the last tutorial we looked at the header function and how we can use it to change headers and we used the more common example of relocating a user to a specific page now we're faced with this problem where we have output before our page or before our PHP code therefore this header function is returning an error so let's just have another look at that we're saying cannot header can it modify header information headers already sent by this page uh, and we're saying on line 8 so we're calling this on line 8 now there's a simple way um, to resolve this and to solve this problem we use a function called ob underscore start now this stands for output buffering start and what this function does is it turns output buffering on now I'll show you how we write this in our program uh, or our code rather and then I'll tell you a bit about the function and why we have to use it and what it does so I'm going to create some PHP tags as well up here before my output and also before the code that uses the header so this is going at the very very top of my page before any output and we use ob underscore start just called simply on its own with no arguments supplied you can also pull this up a bit so it looks a bit neater so it's all on one line okay so ob start will not output any um, anything on the page what well it will but it will be the um, page output will be stored in an internal buffer rather than um, as headers so if we have some page content on here uh, let's say my page this is my page um, let's just uh, let's say redirect equals false so we don't do a redirect um, and let's run the page so before we had this cannot modify header information but with a simple change up here ob start uh, actually yeah let's change this to true so we do redirect with a simple ob start called at the top when we refresh now our page is going to redirect so if you're receiving this error um, that we've had before we use this let's just get rid of that if you're receiving um, this error here then you need to consider using the ob start now at the end of the page it's always good practice to use another function which will um, clean the output so we say ob end oh, ob end clean and what this function does is clears the output buffer um, but doesn't actually give us any contents back so when we refresh this um, that's still going to redirect and if we change redirect to false so we're not redirecting and we refresh oh, go back and refresh oh okay so if we use um, ob end flush and we refresh we get the page contents out um, so if the redirect is, is uh, false we're not redirecting but we're still displaying this even if this is not redirecting if you are redirecting the page um, if you're redirecting the page you'll just need ob and clean and what this does is it won't output anything on the page uh, there's no need for that so uh, ob and uh, flush will put will okay so ob start is storing um, the output in an internal buffer then ob and flush is flushing this buffer but then producing the contents back onto the page however the way you think about it if you were to log a user out you don't really need to display anything you just need to redirect them maybe to a thank you for logging it or you know see you soon page or something 
So as it stands, this is like this. Then we change this to true. And we successfully redirect the user to another page. This can also be an, an internal file as well. You can say page equals index.php or page equals by.php or anything. So it doesn't have to just be a URL. It can be a either your URL or a file within your web server. Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is another video tutorial for the new Boston. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna be lightly touching on the um, remote address um, functionality of our, set, our predefined server or environmental information. Now, you probably always wondered um, how websites you know, grab your IP address, and it's simpler than you might think. Now, in this example, this will grab an IP address, but it won't be reliable, so it's not a reliable way to grab an IP address. So you should definitely not depend on using this method to gr grab a user's ID IP. For example, you could have a block list of website of um, IP addresses that you want to block from your website and in this video we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do this using this method but I do have another tutorial on how to um, grab the user's IP in a more reliable um, correct way so I've got this file called conf.inc.php and that's going to take contain the dynamic um, uh, a, a dynamic variable that's going to be updated based on the user's IP address. So the first thing we're going to do is create that, echo it out in index.php, we're going to preview it in our browser and then we're going to learn how we can block this IP address. So I'm going to block myself from the website. Okay, so let's um, start by creating a variable and I'm just going to call this IP address. Um, and I'm going to make that equal to, we're using the same um, syntax, so it's dollar underscore server. Now inside here we need to type remote underscore, and it's not address like this, but it's a shortened version of address, so it'll be AD, ADD, yeah, like that, so ADDR. So we have uh, this remote address in here, which is now corresponding to this variable here, and we can echo that out on PHP, index.php. So the first thing we're going to do, oh, in capitals, so we're going to require our conf.inc.php. And if you haven't already um, looked at what require or include do, uh, take a look back and uh, you'll find another tutorial on that as well. So we've required our file. Let's just uh, refresh our page to make sure everything's working. Yeah, everything seems to be working. Now what we can do is echo out that variable that we've defined in here. So that's IP underscore address, so it's IP address. And let's refresh the page. Okay, so at the moment, because I'm running on a local server, you can see that I'm using localhost up here. The IP address is 127.0.0.1, which is a local IP address for every machine. So now, how do we go about blocking me from this? Well, it's absolutely simple. Let's go into conf and create an array of IP addresses that we want to block. So IP blocked equals uh, array. And we're going to create um, some IP addresses that are blocked. So 127.0.0.1. And let's just make up one. So we'll say 100.100.100.100. .100 .100 .100. So it's a load of rubbish, but this is the one here that we uh, are going to use it as the example. We're going to search through this whole array, though. So now what we can do is in the uh, in this um, in this comp file as well is we could uh, include this in here or our index.php. It doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, let's do it in index, so uh, it looks a bit neater. So the first thing we want to do is we want to produce some content down here. So I'm going to create a header saying welcome okay now this is displayed currently because uh, we haven't created a function to block out uh, block our IP however up here what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a for each loop and then I'm going to create my block and then so what we're going to do inside this for each uh, um, construct is we're going to check we're going to take each element of this array and check the current IP address against each one and then if it does happen to be uh, blocked we're just going to kill the page so we're going to use the die or the exit function to kill the page uh, 
So for each, and by the way, this should come up the top of your script if you are actually going to use this. But like I said before, uh, this is an unreliable way to grab an IP address. So for each, let's go back to our variables, IP underscore blocked. So for each IP blocked as IP. So this is each IP. So as we run each loop of this, IP will correspond firstly to 127.0.0.1 and then 100 and then 100 blah blah blah. So uh, let's just echo these out so we know that it's working. We'll put a break there and we'll echo out IP. So let's just refresh the page and see what happens. So we've echoed out both them IPs. So now it's logical that we can come inside here and say if IP is equal to IP address, this this is the current IP address of the user, then die, oh, and then inside here we can write a message, so let's just test it for now, if we refresh, you can see that nothing comes up, that's because we've killed the page at this point, and that's it, we're not displaying this header, we've killed everything after this point. So uh, let's come in here and get rid of this and see if that makes a difference, which it will do. So we can refresh and you see that we're allowed access to the page. So now let's create a sort of message to the user to, sh to let them know that their IP has been blocked. So your IP address and then we append on IP, so that's the current IP that's been found and blocked. Um, oh well, no, we can do IP address like that. So IP has been blocked. Okay, so now let's refresh. Your IP address 127.0.0.1 has been blocked. So that's a simple way to grab the IP address of the user and then perform a couple of checks. I mean, I've just done this as an example, um, just a bit of use out of this uh, this uh, variable here. Uh, but this isn't obviously, like I said, the greatest way to grab the user's IP address. But there will be a video, well, there is a video on that in this series that allows you to grab the actual IP address of the user.